I know, I believe, and I trust that most of the Christians do not believe that they can have a relationship with Jesus Christ in their homes without churches, without a pastor, without a prophetess. Okay, now a few days ago, the Lord gave me a dream. And in this dream, he gave me an instruction to go and speak to his children and tell them to come out of those churches. Now, I saw a lady who was dressed modestly, very, very modestly. And I, I asked her, where are you going? She said to me, I'm going to a Catholic church. I said, are you a Catholic? She said, no, I'm a believer in Jesus Christ, but I attend a Catholic church. I said, no, you need to come out of that church because it is impure in the eyes of God. All right. And then there was another category there was another category, there was another lady who, who was also um, uh, dressed modestly, but she had makeup on and, and wigs on, you know. And on the other side, she was going late to church. And I said, where are you going? She said, I'm going to church. Am I dressed modestly? I said, yes, you are dressed modestly, but what you got on your face is, is unclean in the eyes of God. Now, one thing that I say to them in the dream, I say, come out of those churches because those preachers have failed to tell you what is true holiness in the eyes of God. They have blinded you. All right. When I woke up from a dream, the Lord instructed me to uh, record a video and send out to the children, to the family. All right. And then I wasn't in a position of recording this in that moment, in that hour. So I write it down in the community section now. You need to always uh, tune in the community section and, and check what I am writing there, what I'm sending out from the Lord at least twice or three times in a week because I cannot determine when the word of God comes to me in the hour. All right. Okay. And then um, another day after that, the following day from that very dream, as I kept on meditating on what the Lord was asking me to speak out, then he gave me another dream where uh, the word came to me and said to me that uh, it shall be, it shall be as it was in the days of new word. It shall be as it was in the days of of newer now when you read in the four gospels the book of luke Mark, matthew and john these are the four gospels where we find all the activities that the lord jesus christ did all the things all the faith you find faith there you find everything that jesus christ did all the teachings that he told to his disciples you find everything there and then he was telling his he was prophesying to uh his disciples and for telling them about the future about the end Okay, and then he said to them, it shall be as it was in the days of Noah. All right, now look at this. I want you to look into this. The people who are attending churches, if you are a person that's still believing that you cannot have a relationship with Jesus Christ in the comfort of your house, if you are still believing that you cannot have an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ in the comfort of your house, if you are still believing that you cannot be healed, okay, you cannot be healed by praying to the Lord Jesus Christ in the comfort of your house, then you have to know that you are very far from Jesus Christ. You have to know that you are very far from the Holy Spirit. You have to know that you are just a person that's calling a title of a believer. You are somebody that's just calling a title of a disciple of Jesus Christ. You are just carrying the title of a Christian, but you are far from the Lord Jesus Christ. Because if you are a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, I tell you, the, the, the things... That were, that were done by Jesus Christ will follow you. And if these things follow you, then that means that you yourself are Jesus Christ. You yourself are Jesus Christ. Okay, many believers think that to go to church is I need anointing as a person. 
I need a anointing as a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. I need to be anointed by the man of God. I need to be anointed by the woman of God. I need to be baptized by this. I need to be baptized by that. I need to go and have communion together with the believers. I need to do this. Okay, now, look at this. When you look in the Bible, all the things that were foretold by the Lord Jesus Christ were things that shall help us through the life, through the journey of Christianity. Okay? You cannot bring the things of the old and put it in the present as of now. Okay? You cannot bring the things of the old and bring them into present as of now. When you look at the scriptures, they keep on shifting from uh, scripture to scripture, from scripture to scripture. In the days before, it was very rare to find a woman that would speak the wisdom of God. You would only find wisdom in the man of God. Apostle Paul, James, Philip, and all of that. You will find the wisdom of God in them. But now, look into these last days. How much wisdom is poured out into the women of God? Someone speaks about mysteries that, that had, ha, hadn't been known before. Okay? And they speak the true heart of God. They speak the true holiness of God. He said, and in those days, I shall pour out my spirit on all flesh. Okay, so now we see that scriptures keep going, moving from here to there. From here to there. In the first place, he said, where there will be one or two, where is one or two? There shall be my spirit, right? Where, where will be one or two? There shall be my spirit. But somewhere, somewhere, he also says that when you pray, close your door, okay? He said, when you pray, close your door. Close your door and pray to your God in secret. Do you see that? Pray to your God in secret. He does not mean that it, it is abolished in a way that do not gather anymore. But if there is an opportunity for you to gather with a true child of God, as you are true, a child of God, then take that opportunity. But when you pray, close the door and pray in secret. Now look. Another one. Let me give you another one. Okay. He said, when he was talking to the Samaritan woman, he said, the time shall come and surely it has come where it shall not matter whether you pray to God, whether you worship God in the mountain or in the temple. For God is looking for people that will worship him in truth and in the spirit. All right. Now, why are you taking yourself in the mountains to seek God. Why are you taking yourself into the temples, into the churches to seek God, but you're still empty, you're still in sin, you're still in lust, you're still in adultery, you're still in fornication. There is no God there. All right? First, it needs to be in truth. In truth. It has to be a sincere heart. Okay? You say, Time, time, time shall come. And he said, and surely it has come. It has come. Where it will not matter whether you worship God in the mountain or in the temple. You see? Many, yes, you can attend the temples. But what is most important before God is truth is you and him he said it will not matter at all what matters is truth now if you are going in that place 
and there is no truth. Say like, for example, you are in truth. You are living in truth. You don't fornicate. You don't lust. You don't, you don't have envy and hatred in, in you. You don't have pride in you. But you go in a church or you go in a temple. You go in a synagogue. You go in a congregation with people who are practicing immorality. So now, where do you expect God to be in this place? I'll testify to you. I went to one of the churches and I say, Lord, I'm going to this church, but I want to find you there. I need a church I can congregate and pray together with the believers, okay? It has always been my delight to find a proper church that believes in God the way I do believe in God, dressing modestly, covering your body, respecting and honoring your body because your body is a temple of Jesus Christ. That's what I know and because that's what the Bible says, all right? Now, I went to this church and the, the service was okay. It was all fine. Well, I thought I was worshiping with uh, true people. At some point, I said, okay, maybe the Lord has brought me here to speak what is the truth, what God is looking for from believers or from a person that wants to be raptured. But as I was given an opportunity to meet the leader of that church and I introduced myself to them and I said, listen, this, what I see in this church is not proper in the eyes of God. If you give me one chance, I will share my testimony before the people. And they say to me, what testimony? First, you need to address a testimony to me, then I will approve it. I addressed my testimony to this gentleman. And after that, he takes me again to another level, to the elders. I go to the elders and I address myself to the elders. The elder does not have wisdom at all. And I say so, if the, the, if the leader, if the, the elder in the church is reasoning in this way, okay, you will say, but why would I say the elder does not have wisdom at all? Right. You know exactly, um, I'm going to say this to you, even a person that had not known the holiness of God would say, no, absolutely, that is very wrong. Okay. This elder of the church says to me, um, it is not proper for everyone to be very, very, very strong in Christianity. <laughs> <laughs> say it is not proper okay there are some who have to be simple who have to be very slow and there are some who have to be very very strong not everyone has to be very, very <laughs> and i asked him where is it written in the bible where is this that you're saying written in the bible he couldn't answer me okay he said, it is okay, it is okay, there are, you know, there are these Christians, there should be in the church, there should be Christians who are just quiet, quiet who should be just normal Christians, and there are these ones who must be up high, okay. Then, he said to me, wearing pants, it is not a problem, this is an elder of the church, he said to me, wearing pants is not a problem in the church okay for a christian but it is a problem if you wear something that is too too tight so if they wear these simple pants these simple big big pants it, that is okay it is okay this simple simple sim so when i looked around the church i did not see what he was saying to me that it is okay to wear these simple simple pants he's saying that it is wrong to wear those tight pants but when i looked around i saw most of the women were wearing these tight pants and he kept on saying that it is wrong to wear mini skirts sh short skirt tight and that the one that is too much above uh, the the knees so when i looked around at what he was saying to me I saw most of the women in the church are wearing tight, tight, tight skirts, mini skirts, and one of which was an usher standing at the door, okay? And I say, there is no wisdom here. There is no God here. 
if an elder of the church is reasoning in this way, there is no God here. And I said, I'm going to go pray to God and come back again. Maybe God will soften the heart of this gentleman and give me an opportunity to speak. Because what I was determined at is to only speak to the believers, to the children who are blinded. They cannot see that they are being misled. They are, mis they are being led astray, okay? But unfortunately, I wasn't given this opportunity. By the time I came back again, at the time I left this church, I had a very terrible headache. I had a very, very, very terrible headache. Very, very terrible headache. Because I congested myself in a place that does not define me. In the people that are carrying demons on their heads. Carrying demons in their, 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 in, in their waists carrying demons on their chest everywhere you know so there was no god there and at some point they uh invited me to attend their uh um prayers in the mountains they go to the prayer mountain they go pray day they pray to god okay i said i'm gonna pray to god if god lets me if god allows me i will come with you okay when i pray to god and say father should i go father say to me i am not there he said to me i am not there i'm not there at the mountain i'm not even in this church i am not there at the mountain i am not even in this church from that day i said no <laughs> i'm not going back again i said I am not going back again. I repented because I had pushed myself into that before I even asked the Lord for approval if I should go or not. See, because I was so desperate, I needed a church. All right. And then when I kept on asking the Lord, saying, Father, so where is a church for me that I can gather together with? Father said to me, pray Pray to me in your house. I want you to pray to me in your house. Do not involve anyone between me and you. These are the words that the Lord say to me. Okay. Do not involve anyone between me and you. Between our relationship. I like it and I enjoy it when you pray to me in your house. These are the words that the Lord say to me. All right. Now you might say that who is this lady talking all of these kinds of nonsense or what you will call it nonsense. But I tell you, the kingdom of God is not all about mere talking, but the kingdom of God is about power. All right. I will say these things to you and I will demonstrate it with the power that is given to me through Jesus Christ by seeking the Lord in my house, in my room on my knees pray to god at all times i have found peace i have found healing anything i want the lord would do it i can pray for someone that is very far away from me and the lord would do it now for you who um have been helped by the lord god has answered your prayers you can also testify to those who want to believe all right Many have sent me emails and say, Linda, pray for me here. I need help here. I want God to help me here. And I just pray to God in my house. I don't go lay my hands on people. I pray to God. I talk to God in my house. And surely they come back and testify from a long distance. All right. I don't go to church. I don't, I don't, I don't ask uh, pastors to do all of these kinds of things for me. Teach me how to pray or teach me how to do this or teach me how to do that. No, I have raised people from comas just on my knees in my house. Brought people back to comas. Yes, you heard that very correctly. In my house. All right. What is God looking for? Faith. Now, if you are this person who is like, I need to go to church and they have to lay hands on me. I need the pastor to lay hands on me. I need a pastor to anoint me with anointing oil. Your faith is very, 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 very far. You got no faith. I don't want to use the word little because if I say little, you would think you got much faith. Your faith is really very far. 
because you believe God for your pastor not for you you believe God for your past this is how many people have lost their opportunities to have a relationship with God you need to come out of the boat and walk on the waters and come to Jesus Christ just the way Simon Peter walked out of the boat from his fellow disciples and he went he walked on the water. This is total faith. He said, Lord, master, is it you? Is that you? While they were in the boat, they looked on the sea, on the waters, and they saw a man walking on the waters. And then Simon Peter said, master, is that you? Okay. And what did he do when the Lord responded? He went forward and he said, no, I'm going to leave behind my family. I'm going to leave behind all the churches. I'm going to leave behind all immorality. I'm going to leave behind all my brothers and sisters. I don't care who, who is praying with me. I don't care who is fasting with me. I don't care who is reading the Bible with me. I don't care who is going to preach the word of God with me. I just want Jesus. I see Jesus standing over there. I'm going to go to him. You need to take a step. You need to take a step. You can get nothing. You will get nothing in the comfort of your friends, in the comfort of your fellow believers. You need to set yourself aside like Simon Peter. Set yourself aside. Set yourself aside. Okay? Do not believe for Jesus Christ. Do not believe God for your fellow disciples. Now you might be wondering where are you going to put your tithe or offering as a Christian, as a believer in Jesus Christ without a church. All right. It is very easy. It's very simple. In the Bible, you see the things that um, God emphasizes that please him on his heart. So like, for example, in the book of Isaiah chapter 58, verse 6, he talks about the kind of fasting that pleases him. When I ask the Lord and say, Father, you have taken me out of the churches and you want me to pray in my house, but I don't have the church that I can give my tithe to or offering. And then the Lord let me in the book of Isaiah 58, verse 6, the kind of fasting that pleases him. So when that moment of fasting comes, I need to do this charity work all right now what do i do if i do not have funds to do this kind of work i set aside my tithe all right i collect it and when the time of fasting comes i know that i have something to do what pleases the heart of god now before i also do that i fast as god i fast pray to god and say father here is where i'm going to put my tithe sometimes you don't need to wait for an answer from the lord you have to go forward and do it because already it pleases god already it pleases god to help someone that is truly in need because those people out there are praying to god for some food for some clothes all right and god is not going to come down here and give them food and give them clothes right now god will work through you and me that is why we are disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. And on the other hand, also, as I've said, I do not go forward and do anything without asking the Lord. I say, Father, where do you want me to put my tithe in this season? All right. God will lead me to my old pastor that pre preached to me while I was still young. All right. And you asked me to put my tithe there. Okay, so you have to always ask the Lord before you go forward and give your tithe. At some point, you will not have to wait for God to answer you, to give you an answer. Something like supporting a ministry, it is also a good thing in the eyes of God. Most importantly, put your tithe somewhere that you see God is pleased, that you see someone is in trouble in that way you may get a blessing from god because that person was praying to god for a help for a breakthrough and another thing i god is concerned about something i want you to know is that god checks the heart while you give your tithe or offering you have to know that your heart has to be very very sincere so that you may get a blessing all right ask god first tell god first Father, here I am taking my, my tithe here. 
I am taking my offering here. May you bless me, Father. May Do not believe God for your pastors. All right. Simon Peter did not say, come Philip, let's go to Jesus. He did not say that. He did not say, come James, let's go to Jesus. No, they were together in the boat, in the boat. What did he do? He said, I don't care. I can't even see this water. I don't, I don't know if the sharks will swallow me. I don't know. I don't care. What I see is Jesus Christ. What I see is Jesus Christ. When I asked the Lord, how should I present this? And the Lord said to me, do you remember Simon Peter walking on water, walking out of the boat and coming to me? Tell them to set themselves aside. The Lord wants it so much when you set yourself aside from what is unclean. He said, touch no unclean thing and I shall be your God. All right? Touch no unclean thing and I shall be your God. Now, if you're this person, I need to be anointed. I need the anointing. I need to be anointed by my pastor. I need to be what? To be laid hands on by my pastor. Your faith is very far. You don't have Jesus. There is no Jesus in you. You don't have the Holy Spirit. You are very far. Very, very, very far. I testify to you. I was anointed by the Lord in my house. Okay, I was baptized by fire, by God himself. There was no pastor to baptize me with fire. There is the baptism of fire and the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the baptism of water. All of those testify for one person and that's Jesus Christ. I was anointed in my house anointed in my house no pastor the wisdom i share with you the mysteries i reveal to you are given to me in my house in my house i don't make calls to people to teach me this and teach me that at once i thought about it and the lord said to me focus on only me that was the first time I heard the voice of God in my life. Focus on only me. Okay? And I can tell you that if I am sick, I don't waste my time to go to the hospitals. If the Lord would want me to go to the hospital, I will ask him. But if I am sick, I will lay hands on myself. Because it is written, every knee shall bow before the name of the Lord and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord and Savior. Now sickness is a name. That pain that is in your body is a name. You just need to understand that that name, that sickness shall bow. It bows down to the name Jesus Christ. You need to understand the power that is in the name Jesus Christ. I lay hands on myself and I say, Lord, here's the pain. This is what happens. And that, that's what happened. That's what happened. Please take the pain away from me, Lord. I do not want discomfort. I don't like it when I go to pray to God and I have pain on me. I have this disturbing me. I have, uh-uh. When I go to the throne of God, I want to talk in peace. I want to talk to him in peace and I want to feel, I want to feel the peace. I want to feel the love. I want to feel my prayer is heard before God. If I feel my prayer is not heard before God, there is something wrong somewhere. Be sensitive in the spirit. Be sensitive in the spirit. When I go to worship, the Lord says to me, I love your voice. He says to me, I love your voice. You sing so beautifully. You see, <laughs> he says that to me. Yes, the Lord says that to me. You might be wondering, maybe I'm talking what doesn't exist. Now I'll say to you, I'm someone who traveled from Uganda to South Africa for an implant of a heart. Do you know the implant of the heart? Do you know how it pains to have a heart, a heart problem, a heart failure? You know that, 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 that pain you go through. But the one who was crucified and raised to life on the third day. 
Glory be to his name. He healed my heart. Now I can use this hand. Right? That was my life. That is why I traveled from Uganda to South Africa. And from that moment, he said to me, go and speak each and everything I reveal to you. I teach you. And I can say to you, no one teaches me these things I say to you. But it is the living God. It is Jesus Christ. Now you yourselves can testify that when you send me prayer requests, I pray to God. And it comes to pass. When I give you instructions, follow them. You go and pray to God. God answers you. You can testify these things. Right? Come out of those impure churches. Come out of those impure churches churches we are in that time where the lord is looking for a sincere heart someone that will worship him pray to him in the truth and in the spirit not in the temple nor on the mountain if you do that do it but do not touch what is unclean do not associate with what is unclean you need to believe that each and everyone that adorns themselves with the beauty of this world will never enter the kingdom of God. You need to accept that truth. Because me, who has seen the light of the Lord Jesus Christ, me, who has raised someone from a coma, me, who was healed by Jesus Christ himself in my house, I say to you, God is three times holy. God is three times holy. And he said to me, throw your makeup away. I was doing modeling. I was a hostess. I lived my life in that kind of way. But he said to me, I want you to be my servant. And I tell you, the kingdom of God is not just about mere talking, but it's about power. Now, if you say God checks the heart, and you don't preach this holiness of God, you don't tell people to dress modestly, or you are attending these churches where people are dressing like the world, show me the power that has been given to you by the Lord Jesus Christ. And let me show you my power that has been given to me by the Lord Jesus Christ with my deeds. Let me show you my power. Show me your power with your arrogancy. The Lord said to me, Linda, each and everyone that you see speaks prosperity, preaches prosperity. If you see the one that is not speaking what I preached while I was on the earth, but they are able to heal and to do all of those miracles, believe that I am not the one, their master. The Lord said that to me. And I do not question the Lord about it. It is very easy for you to taste the spirit. It's very easy for you to taste the spirit. These are the mere things you have to look at. Look at the nature of God. And look at the nature of that person. Because if any man comes to Christ, the old things are gone and the new has come. You become the nature of God. You speak like God. You walk like God. You think like God. You talk like God. Everything like God. You dress like God. Because the Spirit of God lives inside of you. If the true Spirit of God lives inside of you, everything about you will be God. And you will be seen by your fruits. You cannot be able, you cannot be able to lay hands and heal. But on the other hand, you're not preaching the truth. There is a contradiction somewhere there. Because if the Spirit of God is there, it will convict you of what is wrong in the eyes of God. 
He said, I shall send an advocate. I shall send the helper. He will teach you and remind you of my teachings. How is the Spirit of God going to come and heal when there is lust, there is adultery, there is prostitution there? And this prostitution is not willing to change. No. See with your eyes. You need to open your eyes and look into these things. Flee yourself away from these preachers. Flee yourself away from these pastors. Let me be an example to you. Okay? I may not know how old you are or where you live. I am 21 years now. The Lord has started teaching me all of these things from the age of 17 years old. Whereby there was no parents to lecture me into these things. But God has been as a father to me. He has taught me how to behave around people in order to maintain a relationship. Because before that, I used to lose many friends, jobs, and all of that. Because I was too impatient with people and their behaviors. But God taught me patience. God taught me how to speak. How to speak to people. What words to use. And this same God, I say to you, He wants you to pray to Him in your house take yourself away separate yourself take yourself away for as long as they're not dressing modestly do not doubt do not have a second thought about it do not think twice the other thought is for satan okay think once you have heard once think once decide once for god shall decide once on the day of judgment for you. Work on building your faith because that is what shall protect you from what is about to take place in the world. Okay, may the peace of the Lord be upon you all and I see you again. Bye.